dimensions and dimensional formula or formulae any derived quantity that is a physical quantity it can be expressed in terms of combination of seven fundamental or base quantities in order to do it swiftly the base quantities they are represented by letter symbol for example the mass we represent by capital m the length by capital l the time by capital t the electric current by capital a the thermodynamic temperature the amount of substance and the luminous intensity they are denoted by this kelvin mole and cd candela so where a physical quantity will be expressed with appropriate powers of m l t a k for temperature then this expression for physical quantity will be known as dimensional formula the power or the exponent of this m l t a or k the power please understand the power are known as dimensions of that quantity the dimensional formula we will write it in square brackets along with the symbol of physical quantity let us take an example what will be the dimensional formula of velocity velocity we know it is displacement by time for this let us take it as v like this now the displacement is of course length so we will take the dimension of length time is of course the dimension of time we are going to take so this will be dimension of length by dimension of time that is l by t and this l by t because there is only one length and one time so we will take the power as 1 so l to the power 1 and t to the power 1 and when we take t to the numerator this power goes minus 1 so this will be the reciprocal we are taking so l to the power 1 t to the power minus 1 and we always complete it we just don't let it be like this we always include m so because there is no m and we know that x to the power 0 any any value to the power 0 is always 1 so in this place we can write m to the power 0 which is by itself 1 so m to the power 0 l to the power 1 and t to the power minus 1 this is the dimension formula dimensional formula of velocity and what are the dimensions as i said the powers are the dimension so the dimension of mass in velocity is 0 length is 1 and time is minus 1 let us find the dimension of kinetic energy we know that kinetic energy is given by half mv square half into mass into velocity square so in order to find the dimensional formula of k we will find out the dimension of m and v and this half because this is a number so this is dimensionless so we don't take this into account now this is m and this is v m will simply write m to the power 1 we just we just have found out in the previous discussion m to the power 0 l to the power 1 and t to the power minus 1 and we have to square it so let us square it 2 to the power 2 into 0 is m to the power 0 right l to the power 1 2 into 1 is l this 2 so it would be l square 2 into minus 1 is minus 2 so it would be t to the power minus 2 so m to the power 1 l to the power 2 and t to the power minus 2 so this is the dimension formula of energy let us see some dimensional formula of some physical quantity we will see in a table i will show you a table properly now comes the dimension analysis so the idea of obtaining or the method of obtaining the solution to several problem in physics by using this formula is called the dimensional analysis so what are the usage or the dimensional analysis uses so the use of dimension analysis is to obtain the relation between the units of some physical quantity in two different system of unit say mks and we have cgs we have to find out the relationship between two units two unit systems 
or physical quantity. Then to check the dimensional consistency of an equation which is connecting different physical quantities, that means the left hand side dimension should be equal to right hand side dimension. Then also we can use this dimension analysis to derive an equation for the, for the physical quantity in terms of other of physical related quantities. We will see all these with examples. In order to obtain the relationship between the units of physical quantity in two different system of units, say the unit of work in MKS meter, kilogram and second is Joule, J, capital J because this is the name of a famous scientist and that in CGS is known as ERG, ERG again the name from the from a, a very important phenomena. So, CGS is ERG. So, the relationship between this Joule and ERG, how to obtain this? Let us start. See, the dimension formula for work, this work is simply energy and we have just seen how to find out half mv square that was energy work. So, m to the power 1, l to the power 2, t to the power minus 2. Now, in this mk system, this is okay, but in CGS system, we know that 1 kg because this is mass and this is so this was mass actually so this was kg and uh, of course this kilometer and second so if i if i said something else i'm correcting it this is kg mass this is for kilometer that is length and this is second for time so m is kg l is mass and t is s but this kg we need to convert it into centimeter oh sorry the CGS system. So, we want this gram, we want gram. So, kg to gram conversion is 10 to the power 3. We know that in 1 kg there are 1000 grams. In this uh, L for, for m, we need to convert it into the centimeter because this is centimeter and centimeter is what? We know that meter is equal to 100 that is 10 to the power 2 centimeter. Time uh, will remain same because this is second, this is second. So, we uh, say 10 to the power 0 because we do not want any conversion. 10 to the power 0 is 1 already. So, now in this place, mkg will we'll write 10 to the power 3, right? 10 to the power 3 m. In place of uh, this l, we will write in, in this case, we will write 10 to the power 2 l. In this case, we will just simply write 10 to the power 0 t. So, 10 to the power 3 m to the power 1 is 10 to the power 3 m to the power 1. Now, this this 10 square l because it is whole square. So, 10 square will be 10 to the power 4 l will be l square. And again, this has power of minus 2. So, this whole power, power minus 2 this will remain because 0 minus 2 is already 0. So, this will be 1 but t to the power minus 2 you will get. Now, 10 to the power 3 10 to the power 4 you have to add that will be 10 to the power 7 the power adds. 3 and 4 will get added and m l square t minus 2. So, this is this is in CGS system. So, 10 to the power 7 m to the power 1 l square t to the power minus 2 is your conversion. So, mks in the in the mks system the unit of work will be equal to 10 to the power 7 CGS unit. So, what will be the result here? This is joule, this is erg. So, what is the relationship between joule and erg? 1 joule is equal to 10 to the power 7 r. Now, in order to verify the dimension or dimensional consistency of equation which is, which is connecting different physical quantities. So, for any equation relating different physical quantities, if the dimension of terms on both sides are same, then the equation is said to be consistent dimensionally. For instance, the centripetal force acting on an object in uniform circular motion is given by what? f is equal to mv square by r. So, if somebody is moving like this, it experiences centripetal and centripetal and centrifugal force. So, this centripetal force is given by mv square by r. m here is mass, v is the velocity and r is the radius. So, now let us check the dimensional consistency of this equation. From, from the left hand side of the equation, the force is simply m to the power 1, l to the power 1, t to the power minus 2. Now, we know that this is this is m into v square by r. So, this is mass 
v we know and this is l to the power 1 now this mv square by r we have to find out but in this case in this case i am not writing mv square by f mv square by r right this is simply m to the power 1 and i know that l to the power 1 can be written as l to the power 1 can be written as l square by l right this is simply l only so for this l to the power 1 i am writing l square by l and t remain like this but in this case this is uh, equivalent this is equivalent to this only now this m is m here this is velocity square and this is r so uh, essentially you are getting the left hand side equal to the right hand side so the dimension of lhs and rhs are same this gives or uh, this gives that the dimensions or the given equation is dimensionally correct so if a equation has certain constant which are dimensionless uh, we will not use it it cannot be verified with dimension analysis for constant we cannot verify now in to obtain the equation for a physical quantity in terms of an another or other physical quantity suppose we would like to obtain the expression of uh, a periodic time of a pendulum a simple pendulum so this periodic time of a simple pendulum it depends on length the mass of the bob and the gravitational pull which is the gravitational acceleration so t the time is directly proportional to mass i don't know how much so m to the power a related to the length so l to the power b and related to g so g to the power c i don't know what is this abc i just wrote it so t is directly proportional to m to the power a into l to the power b into g to the power c let us remove the, this dimensionality uh, means proportionality so we can have a constant with this k is the constant of proportionality and k is always dimensional because it is a constant and this a b c belongs to some real number so when we want or want to write the dimension formula for both sides this is simply what m to the power 0 l to the power 0 t to the power 1 because this is simply time so t will be 1 others we we placed it at 0 and the right hand side it is simply m to the power 1 which is to the power a l to the power 1 to the b and this is this was what see let me show you this was mass simply mass so we wrote m to the power 1 to the power a this was simply length so l to the power 1 to the power b but this g is acceleration so this is m to the power 0 l to the power minus 1 l to the power 1 and t to the power minus 2 to the power c so this is g now let us multiply c here c into 0 is 0 c into 1 is c c into minus 2 is minus 2c so this comes now let us add the if the bases are same the power will get added so this is a plus 0 the a, a plus 0 that is a b plus c that is this b plus c and this will be minus 2c now when we say that x to the power a is equal to x to the power b that means a has to be equal to b this simply in this we will do that m to the power 0 m to the power a so a will be equal to 0 l to the power 0 l to the power b plus c so b plus c is equal to 0 and t to the power 1 t to the power minus 2c so minus 2c will be equal to 1 so when we so this is first equation second equation third equation when we solve this we get c and b equal to minus half and half now let us put this value in the original equation so t is e was equal to k m to the power a which came to 0 b l to the power b b came as half and g to the power c which came as minus half now this is l to the power half we know that x to the power half is simply equal to under root x and x to the power minus half what it will be 1 by under root x so this is under root l and this is 1 by under root g so this will be combined in the combined way t equal to k under root l by g this value of k can be obtained experimentally which, which comes to 2 pi so see t equal to 2 pi under root l by g and this is the formula for the periodic time of a simple pendulum just by dimensional analysis we have formed a formula which we are going to use uh, in our questions so what are the limitation of dimensional analysis 
in any dimension formula which contains m ln t we get most at most three equation that is three equation when we equate power of m l t as we just saw in the example so dimension analysis cannot be used to derive the exact form of physical relation if the physical quantity depends upon more than more than three physical quantity so if it is three it is okay otherwise not possible then in this case when we when we found out the formula we said that k will be found experimentally so information about the dimensionless constant which cannot be computed or, or obtained here so t equal to k under root l by g k is 2 pi this can be obtained with the help of an experiment only then the dimension analysis cannot be used to derive relation which involve trigonometric or trigonometrical exponential or logarithmic function so these functions are dimensionless for instance in sin omega t and e to the power minus kx this function omega t and minus kx they are dimensionless okay so we'll solve this these type of questions also one more thing this method is not useful if a constant of proportionality is not dimensionless for instance in this famous gravitational formula f equal to law of gravitation f is equal to g m1 m2 by r square this g which is the gravitational constant has a dimension which is equal to which which is shown by newton meter square by kg square so such equation cannot be obtained by dimension analysis now let us take some uh, illustrations if the velocity of light is taken as the unit of velocity and year as the unit of time then find the unit of distance velocity is given like this we know speed equal to distance by time that is velocity equal to distance by time so distance will be equal to velocity into time so what will be the unit of distance here will be equal to unit of velocity into unit of time but we know in the question it is given that the velocity of light is taken as the unit of velocity so in this case we will directly take 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and unit of time is taken as year so we'll take one year now since this is one year this is meter per second why not to change this year in terms of seconds we know in one year there are 365.25 days in one day there are 24 hours in one hour there are 60 minutes and in one minute there are 60 seconds so in order to convert we have to multiply all these so that we can convert one year into seconds. Now this remain like this. Let us multiply it. 9.468 into 10 to the power 15 will be the answer. And the unit of distance of this type is known as a light here. In a new system, the unit of length, mass and time are chosen to be 10 centimeter, 10 gram and 0.1 second. What will be the new unit of force in Newton in the system? So we have already known the dimension formula of force in our discussion. It is m to the power 1, l to the power 1, t to the power minus 2. So now this m is 10 to the 10 gram. So 10 gram to the power 1. We are simply putting 10 gram in place of m, 10 centimeter in place of l, and 0.1 second in place of t. And powers remain like this. So 10 to the power 1 is 10 to the power 1, right? And this 10 to the power 1 gram, we need to convert it into because what will be the new unit of force in Newton? We want to find it Newton. So this gram, we have to convert it into kg. Simply 1 kg is equal to 10 to the power 3 gram. So 1 gram will be equal to 10 to the power minus 3 kg. Okay. So we will put 10 to the power minus 3 and already 10 is here. So 10 to the power minus 3 into 10. So this 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So this will be 10 to the power minus 2 and this 10 centimeter we have to convert it into meter and we know that in 1 meter there are 100 centimeter that is in 1 meter there are 10 to the power 2, 2 uh, centimeter. So we will just put it here and that, that will come as 10 to the power minus 1. In 0.1 second because second will remain like this but 0.1 is what 1 by 10 and this is square and that is also square of minus 2 right. So this comes to 10 to the power 2 and this this will take the power as minus 2. So 10 to the power minus 2 and 10 to the power minus 1 and 10 to the power 2. So minus 2 minus 1 plus 2 this gives you minus 1. So this will be 10 to the power minus 1 kg meter 
per second square and this is simply newton so this comes as 1 by 10 to the power minus 1 is 1 by 10 which is 0 0.1 in this case when a metallic rod through which heat is being uh, conducting or conducting heat through it is in a thermal steady state the amount of heat passing through it in time t is given by what q equal to k into a t1 minus t2 into small t by n where this k is the thermal conductivity of the material this a is the area of a cross sectional area of the rod t1 and t2 are the temperature of the hot and cold ends respectively of the rod and this small t is the time and capital l is the length of the rod we have to find the dimensional formula of k so when we need to find out the dimensional dimension or dimensional formula of k just put k here and take everything on the left hand side so l will go up and this all will go down in the denominator so q equal to this expression so k will be simply q into l by this in the denominator now we know that this q is heat energy and for energy we have dimension dimensional formula is m to the power 1 l to the power 2 t to the power minus 2 then we have length which is l to the power 1 area is simply l square because this is length into length square and temperature difference of temperature t1 minus t2 because this t1 minus t2 will always come in some temperature term delta t which is equal to kelvin and this is simply to the power 1 time will be also t to the power 1 just in, see here that we have included k along with the mlt this has to be understood because the the substitution or the answer will come in terms of this temperature k so when we substitute these dimension formula in this equation all what we have found out this will be m to the power 1 l to the power 2 t to the power minus 2 l to the power 1 divided by l to the power 2 k to the power 1 at t to the power 1 so m to the power when will remain here this l to the power 2 and l to the power 2 because there is there is one uh, l also here so these two gets gets cancelled l to the power 1 will be here t to the power minus 2 and t to the power 1 is in the denominator this goes up t to the power minus 3 in this k to the power 1 it goes up k to the power minus 1 and this is the k dimensional formula of k so you, this theta is also equivalent some, somewhere it is written as theta obtain the dimensional formula of these physical quantity we have electric charge q potential difference v capacitance c and resistance r for this for solving this the formula are also given the formula connecting these physical quantities are like this q equal to it w equal to vit c equal to cv v equal to ir this i is electric current this small t is time and this w is energy now first we'll take the first one q equal to it now q dimension formula is equal to sim simply this i is ampere t is time so ampere ampere to the power one t and time this t time to the power one rest will take as zero this is the dimension formula of this one electric charge now w equal to vit and it or you can say this it was q so we can write this also or you can write uh, simply like that because v, this v is uh, you know the potential difference and we when we have to find out the potential difference we have to take it in the denominator in this it we will just put this whole you can write it and this work is m to the power 1 l to the power 2 t to the power minus 2 when we solve it we get this q equal to cv we have to find out c so this will be q by v we have we have known about q we have known about v or rather you can do one more thing in place of q you can write it in place of v you can write w by it and just it goes up this will be i square t square and you can you know take it as a square this is t square w is simply m to the power 1 l square t to the power minus 2 and just cancel those out which are possible and this will be the answer v equal to ir r will be equal to v by i so v can be written as w by it i remains like this and i will come down i square so this will be w by i square t again work we know this and this will be ampere square and this is t to the power 1 just solve this you get r by taking velocity time and force as base quantity obtain the dimensional formula of mass so we will use the symbol force f for uh, force t 
T for time and V for velocity. We know that F equal to ma law of uh, motion. So Newton law of motion. So mass into acceleration. Acceleration is simply velocity by time. So in order to find out mass, we'll take time in the numerator, velocity in the denominator. And this mass is simply force to the power one, t to the power one, and velocity to the power one, right? So this is f to the power one, t to the power one, v to the power minus one. Heat produced in a current carrying conducting wire depends on current I, resistance R of the wire and time T for which the current is passed. Now, using these information, we have to obtain the formula for heat energy. Now, it is given that heat produced is dependent or directly proportional to the current. We know how, we don't know how much, so I to the power A, resistance R to the power B, time T to the power C. So, we will we will uh, remove this proportionality and we'll put a constant here. This A, B, C belongs to some real. This is a, these are real numbers. So K is a dimension cons dimensionless quantity. Now let us uh, write the dimension formula for all the physical quantity. We know that because this is energy and we have known about, you know, we have in previous discussions, this is the m to the power 1, l to the power 2, t to the power minus 2. So let us take I as A to the power A because I is current. R is the resistance we just found out in the previous question, the, the dimensional formula of resistance. So this is M to the power 1, L to the power 2, T minus 3, A minus 2 to the power B. Time simply remains like this, right? So A to the power A and let us multiply this and combine them. So A becomes A to the power A. We have A to the power minus 2B, so A minus 2B. M to the power B l to the power 2b and t to the power minus 3b plus c. So this is like this, c minus 3b. Now let us equate them. What we are equating here is, we are equating a with a minus 2b with 1, a, a minus 2b with 0, sorry, there is no a, so a to the power 0 is there. a minus 2b with 0, 1 with b, 2 with 2b, and minus 2 with c minus 3. So this is how we solve them and when we solve them a gets 2, c gets 1. So when we put the formula in the formula, means a, b, c, we replace, we get h equal to k i square rt. And experimentally if uh, we know about this k, k is equal to 1 which is equal to h is equal to i square rt. So these are some physical quantities, they are SI units and dimensional formula. And uh, I just leave it to you. You can just pause and have a look. This is, these are the continued and uh, most of the things if you are preparing for engineering or IIT, J, etc. Then these are very important. You need to learn them. And you also need to learn how they have come. You need to know this, that the frequency is one by periodic time. You need to understand that angular velocity is nothing but angular displacement by time. So for competition exams, these are very important. So these go, goes like this, all are there, like the specific heat, thermal conductivity. And once you, you will solve it, means you will solve it with certain examples, you'll be able to know these will be in your tips. So these are continued one.